Oh man, it's setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Rodney Miller, Dean of the College of Fine Arts, and I want to welcome you to our live chat with uh, incoming students. Um, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions that you should go to Facebook, uh, the College of Fine Arts Facebook, and type your question into the comment box. And one of our uh, minions that are observing this will uh, read and, and uh, communicate your question to me. Uh, tonight, we want to just give you a little bit of an overview of the College of Fine Arts. The WSU College uh, of Fine Arts is the only comprehensive College of Fine Arts in Kansas. We're also one of the most respected colleges of fine arts in the nation. We have exceptional faculty from all over the world whose work is recognized by all sorts of major entities, museums, publications, national and international media, and whose graduates are also recognized. Faculty and alumni from the college have either won or been nominated for every major arts award there is. The Oscar, the Tony, the Clio, the Emmy, the Pulitzer, the Grammy, the Fulbright, the Guggenheim. Their works hang in just about every major gallery, Smithsonian, Metropolitan, the Library of Congress, the Museum of Modern Art, etc. And they've performed in every major venue throughout the world, Broadway, Hollywood, the New York Philharmonic, and every other major symphony, the Royal Shakespeare Company, Newport Jazz Festival, even the Super Bowl halftime, Metropolitan Opera, Vienna Stotts Opera, uh, Covet Garden, Carnegie Hall, and most importantly, MTV and Sesame Street. Our mission is to enhance and advocate artistic excellence through teaching, learning, and expression. And we do this by providing each of you the academic and artistic experiences that you need to begin your journey toward fulfilling your dreams. Majors in the College of Fine Arts range from those related to specific jobs and professions to those leading to more general careers. To that end, the college offers two distinct types of degrees. One is the BA in liberal arts uh, degree, and that is typically a degree that has in the major somewhere between 32 to 36 credit hours, but that also then allows for a minor and sometimes even a major in another area. The other type of degree that we offer is a professional comprehensive degree. And typically that degree has between 75 to 85 required credit hours in the major. The overwhelming majority, close to 80% of our students pursue these professional degrees. What I'd like to now do is to introduce you to the directors of the four schools of the College of Fine Arts, and they will uh, give a very brief overview of their school. The first person I'd like to introduce is Dr. Jeff Pulaski, who is the director of the School of Art, Design, and Creative Industries. Jeff? Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, our chat here. Uh, the School of Art and Design, as you can see with the slide on the screen, uh, the School of Art Design is pretty comprehensive in the visual arts. Uh, we have art education, art history, graphic design, and then a full range of studio art um, concentrations. So uh, if you've got an interest in visual arts and um, would like to explore that as an, a career field, we've got a full range of areas that you can explore and faculty to help guide you um, in those areas. So um, we'd love to have you come and see what we've got and um, look forward to seeing you in the fall. Our next director is Justin Rohrbaugh, who is the director of the School of Digital Arts. Justin. 
I am not Justin Rohrbaugh. Uh, Justin Rohrbaugh was actually forced off of Zoom by ITS. Um, ah. But I'm oh. Alex Sternfeld Dunn. I'm director of the School of Music, and I'd be happy to talk about the School of Music or Digital Arts if you'd like. <laughs> well, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us about the School of Music, and we'll see if you can get back on. I'd be happy to. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm Alex Sternfeld Dunn. I'm director of the School of Music. Uh, much like the School of Art and Design, we are also considered a comprehensive music school. Uh, we offer degrees in music performance in almost every major performing area. We offer degrees in music education, as well as degrees in music composition. Um, we have a undergraduate program and a master's program. So if you uh, are a student here, you'll um, interact with all sorts of levels and abilities. Um, we have around 240 majors. We have uh, about 35 full-time faculty who uh, interact regularly with all of our students. So I hope to see you at the School of Music. Well, I see that Justin is now back on. He has been given a reprieve. So Justin, uh, the director of the School of Digital Arts, quick, while you're still on, tell us about digital arts. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta love the joy of technology. They grab my computer to run updates there. Uh, the School of Digital Arts is uh, where we do animation, game design. You can see all that stuff on the slide. Uh, we get to do the um, a lot of really cool, fun stuff that's all behind the scenes. Uh, so many times when you talk about uh, art, you're seeing the stuff that's, that's up front and that's forward facing. We do all the really fun stuff, the tech stuff back behind the scenes. And so that's um, working with software, computers, and, and it's just kind of ironic that uh, I, I was the one that got kicked out of the stream because I'm the guy that has the computer stuff. Um, but uh, we'd love to have you. What's really great about School of Digital Arts, we're located in, in a really cool facility uh, called Shocker Studios. It's, it's, and we'll talk a little bit about that more in a little bit. And finally, but certainly not least, we have Linda Starkey, who is the director of the School of Performing Arts. Linda? Hi, everyone. We're so glad you're tuning in to find out more about the College of Fine Arts. If you dream of being a dancer, an actor, a music theater performer, maybe a costume designer or stage manager, whether you want to be on the stage or working backstage, we've got lots of opportunities for you. And what we can guarantee is that you're going to get excellent training. You're going to have a choice of applied uh, learning experiences in performance. And you're also going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one contact with really dedicated faculty who want to help you achieve your dream. So we hope you'll join us in the fall. We'd love to have you. When you come to the College of Fine Arts, what you will find is that we are a family and family supports one another. And we have many ways that we support you when you come here as a student. Uh, one of those ways is uh, financial aid. The college offers uh, over a half a million dollars in scholarship annually. annually. Uh, much of that uh, you will uh, uh, audition for or do your portfolio review and automatically be considered for scholarship funding prior to your enrollment. However, and this is very, very important, keep this in mind, much of that scholarship funding is available annually to you after you come to WSU. The College of Fine Arts has required advising every semester, and that's a kind of a bad way to put it. We you get to be advised both by faculty and by advisors. And to um, illustrate that and to talk about that, I'd like to introduce uh, Brittany Olmer and Ben Donalds. Uh, Brittany? Yeah, so I am the first year advisor for the College of Fine Arts. And what that means is that all students who are new um, coming in straight from high school. So not transfer students, but just brand new to college students will work with me for their first year. And as a first year advisor, um, we're gonna cover a little bit more than just classes. We're gonna focus on making sure that you feel comfortable at Wichita State as far as finances, which Rodney said the college does a great job of helping with 
um, also with just understanding registration, understanding the admissions process even. So if you have any questions about getting started at Wichita State, that would be a great resource. And if you're coming in from high school, we want you to know that the first step for us is getting you signed up for orientation. So you will be required to do an orientation over the summer. And the way to start, if you haven't started that process, is to just go to wichita.edu slash orientation to fill out all of that information. And that's how you'll end up with me and getting a schedule built for the fall. Next, I'd like to introduce Ben Donalds, who's one of our advisors, and he's going to talk about the advising center. Yeah, thanks, Rodney. I appreciate it. Uh, so like he said, my name is Benjamin Donalds. I'm the academic advisor for the School of Digital Arts. Um, so in the College of Fine Arts, we have four advisors. Um, Alicia Fullalove is the advisor for Art Design and Creative Industries. Janet Ives is the advisor for the School of Music. And then Sonia Wiles is the advisor for um, the School of Performing Arts. And she also serves as our director of student services and director of advising. And so we're located in the McKnight Arts Center. The way advising works at Wichita State, kind of like Rodney said, students have the opportunity um, to meet with us every semester. And so we meet with all transfer students and then we'll begin meeting with um, those first year freshman students beginning their second semester after they've met with Brittany a couple of times. And so things that you're gonna talk about with your academic advisor is stuff like general education requirements, graduation requirements, will help you in building your schedule, talking with you about how life is going here at Wichita State. Um, you also have the opportunity to meet with faculty advisors every semester. And so faculty advising is a really great opportunity to make connections with people who are going to be your colleagues once you graduate, an opportunity to pick their brains, talk about, hey, what are some skills I'm developing? What should I develop a little more? Job opportunities, reference opportunities, um, stuff like that. So you do get to meet with both of us every semester. Um, we also have um, our success coach in the College of Fine Arts. Her name is Stephanie Cockrell. And so Stephanie is here to make sure you're being successful, really lives up to that title and everything. Um, so she'll talk with you about opportunities to try and improve your time management, um, see how that transition is going to Wichita State, develop a success plan with you, um, just look at her and look at your advisors and everyone here at WSU is just people who are, want you to be successful and want to kind of help out in any way that they can. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, we are located in the largest metropolitan community in Kansas, Wichita. And WSU and the College of Fine Arts takes advantage of all that Wichita has to offer. We not only have facilities throughout uh, the WSU campus, but throughout Wichita. And we take advantage of all of the professional and cultural opportunities that a big city like Wichita has to offer. No other fine arts program in the Great Plains has either the number of facilities nor the square footage. We have over 350,000 square feet of resources. Uh, in more than a dozen buildings. And just a sampling of those, I'm going to turn it back over to the school directors and they're going to describe the facilities in their particular schools. First is Jeff Pulaski. So um, McKnight Arts Center is um, kind of a complex of three buildings that are all kind of connected together. And we have most two-dimensional arts are in what we call McKnight West. So uh, graphic design, photography, drawing and painting, art history um, are all in McKnight West. And that's a, a very large building with a huge atrium that has a lot of room for students to congregate, although not right now, because we have to keep that social distancing going. But there's plenty of room for students to spread out and work. And um, there's a nice skylight at the top that allows natural daylight into the, the space. So it's a really um, inviting space. And the building was built as an art building. So we utilize all the walls in the whole building for um, displaying work that students are working on currently and um, all of that. So it's a, it's a pretty nice facility for an art building. Uh, McKnight East is another building that's connected there by a walkway uh, and the Ulrich Museum of Art is housed in that building. So we're connected to the art museum on campus and um, that's a nice contemporary art museum, uh, brings in several shows a year. Um, our students are very involved and faculty are very involved with those shows. 
There's a smaller building off to the north and it houses art education and printmaking. So nice facilities for those two programs. Uh, and all of those buildings are connected by walkways so um, students can move throughout all three um, without too much trouble. Uh, there's another set of buildings across the street, uh, which is Henry and Hall. And that's where all of our three-dimensional work takes place. And um, students are working there uh, with sculpture and ceramics and then also with um, the graduate students. So it's a very large facility. It's basically two basketball gymnasiums and a football stadium kind of all tied together. So there's lots of room for students to explore and work and uh, create work. Um, lots of lab facilities throughout the space, obviously printmaking, photography, we've got a digital and wet media area for photography. Um, printmaking has a very nice facility with lots of presses um, to work in different mediums. Um, same kind of thing with uh, sculpture and ceramics. They both have, uh, we have a kiln yard that has a lot of different kinds of kilns that you can experiment with and um, wood shop, metal shop, kind of all the standard things, plus um, casting. So we can do aluminum, uh, iron, and bronze, I believe in the, in the facilities for casting. Um, so that's the on-campus facilities. We also have, um, as part of those buildings, we have a couple of galleries uh, that are in the buildings that students can work with. And then we have the ship space gallery, which actually is downtown. It's in uh, a place called Gruber Labs, which is a giant maker space. And so that space is open Monday through Friday and on the weekends. Uh, Wichita has a very vibrant visual arts scene and we have a first Friday event every, um, the first Friday of every month where people do um, a gallery crawl. And it's not unusual for us to have around a thousand students or a thousand people, not students, a um, thousand people visit the gallery on those weekends. So there's a lot of opportunity for displaying work and showing your work and um, having your work in shows. So uh, I, think that, I think that wraps it up for us. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, Justin Rohrbach, who's in charge of Shocker Studios. Uh, Justin, take it away. So Shocker Studios is a, is a bit of a unique space because it's not in a traditional campus building. Uh, we're actually in an old mall and, and our space used to be a Montgomery Wards. Most of you students have no idea what Montgomery Wards is um, because it went away before you would even know what it is. But it's, it's akin to like a, a Sears or a JCPenney's a big department store. Uh, and so it's a great big open space that has a lot of different rooms in it, uh, varying from everything from giant tiered classrooms with uh, 4K projectors to uh, we've got animation studio, clay modeling studio. Uh, there are, uh, we have a fully digital studio, uh, recording studio, fully analog recording studio. Uh, we've got a uh, motion capture uh, stage where we're able to do motion capture for video games. Uh, and for film and for animation. Uh, we also have a, a large uh, film studio. Uh, right now they're showing a picture of, the, of our white cyclorama. That's actually a 6,500 square foot film studio where we have a white screen, a black screen and a green screen. Um, uh, the largest green screen in the Midwest. Uh, and so it's, it's really fun to be able to, to get in there with, with our equipment and and that's one of the other really cool things about our space is uh, we have an equipment checkout area where you're able to check out professional equipment uh, to work on uh, all of your projects and, and everything that's uh, relevant for us in, in the industry today. Thanks, Justin. Uh, we're going to interrupt uh, the facility tour for just a second to answer a question. Uh, Kimberly Wimmer uh, wrote, uh, my daughter Summer is scheduled for the August orientation. Does she need to pick a different orientation date or is that one still happening? So I'm going to put um, Brittany and uh, Benjamin on the hot seat and let them answer that question. Uh, Brittany, what about the summer orientations? So it looks like Brittany's Zoom got frozen. Um, give me one second. She, she said she answered in the comments on there. I didn't read her answer though. So I'm not sure Rodney, what she said. I can answer that question for you. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, orientation is being changed a little. 
so on uh, we're doing online uh, orientations and students are being asked to pick the dates in May, June or July to accommodate those changes. If you have some specific questions, you can call area code 316-978-5420. Okay, thanks. Um, we have another question and we might as well go ahead and answer them now. Uh, Catherine Snyder writes, I got offered an art scholarship, which I accepted, but I never got a confirmation. Uh, was I supposed to? Jeff? No, Catherine, uh, we don't normally send those confirmations once you've sent that in. So uh, there shouldn't be anything else that you need to do. Great, great. All right. Well, moving on, we're going to go back to Alex and let him talk about uh, facilities in the School of Music. Alex? Thanks. Yeah, so what you're looking at right now is Dirksen Fine Arts Center, and that really houses the heart of the School of Music. It includes the 530-seat Miller Concert Hall, the Fine Arts Box Office, our classrooms, rehearsal studios, and an entire wing that is dedicated to different practice studios. Uh, it's where our faculty offices are, and it's where you get a lot of your one-on-one -on -one direct applied instruction. So right now you are looking at the inside of Miller Hall. This is where we do our large ensemble concerts like orchestra, band, our opera, um, jazz bands. And in the next image, you will see this is the wing of our practice rooms. And a fun fact about those windows that you're looking at is they're replicas of uh, World War II bombing plane uh, domes. And so every one of our practice rooms has one of those domes that you can look out of. Although the majority of the action takes place in Dirksen Fine Arts Center, we also have a second building, Wiedemann Hall. This is where, uh, not only does music happen, but our own Rodney Miller and his team uh, are located. The College of Fine Arts office is in Wiedemann Hall. And it's also home to a 425 seat music venue, which houses the great Marcusen organ, which is a stunning pipe organ designed and built on site by the legendary firm of Marcusen and Sons of Denmark. It was the first Marcusen instrument to be built in North America. So if you are an organ student, you're lucky enough that your lessons happen right there, as well as our choral concerts take place there, chamber music concerts, and student recitals. They're, it's probably one of the best places to perform with pretty amazing acoustics. Thanks, Alex. Linda, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, facilities for the School of Performing Arts. Well, you're looking at Wilner, auditorium. It's a historical uh, building that was uh, constructed as part of the Works Progress Administration in the 1930s, so it's been around a while, but we love it. It has our main performance space where we do our main stage theater productions. This is Susical that we did two years ago, so we do our musicals there. We sometimes do our dance concerts in uh, Wilner Auditorium, but it also houses a lot of the faculty offices. We have the costume shop on the second floor where we have students and faculty costume designers who are building these wonderful costumes. This is a picture from our scene shop where they're welding and building sets. And that uh, we do that kind of work over in the scene shop in Dirks and Fine Arts Center. So we're kind of spread out for some of our work. So they build it in, uh, Dirksen Fine Arts Center, and then move it over to Wilner if it's going to be used in a performance there. But the other nice thing about Wilner, in addition to the faculty offices, is we have this commons area where students can gather around several tables where they study, they rehearse. It's a good communal place where, where students can get together with faculty, and we have some of our social events there. So that's all of what happens in Wilner. Uh, we also have two dance studios in the Heskett Center where our dance classes are and the dance faculty have their offices. We're in the process this summer of converting a third uh, exercise room now to be a dance studio. 
with a, the floor that is needed for dancers. So we're real excited about adding that new third dance studio. Um, and then the Harry Lit one is one of those dance studios that actually has a stage. So uh, the dancers can sometimes do their senior concerts there and it's a wonderful venue for smaller performances. And then our third space is uh, in the Wells Walker Theater, which is a part of the Metroplex over at 29th and Oliver. Uh, this is a picture of a, a, a production that was designed and directed by students. So it's our black box theater that's very flexible. And this unique design was uh, staged in the round. So the uh, seating was moved. So people were sitting all around this configuration of a, of a room. So it's very flexible. It's a wonderful space for students to work as they're directing and learning to design for a smaller space. So those are our main three spaces. We also do some classes in the basement of Dirksen Fine Arts Center. There's a dance studio there that we use for some of our music theater classes. So we're fortunate to have so many different spaces to use for our different classes and performances. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, we're gonna interrupt again for another question. Uh, this one's tailor-made for Benjamin and possibly then also Justin from Dalton Dix. He says, is there a la list of classes offered by Shocker Studios that I can access so I can figure out a path for my major? I'm altering my schedule currently and I uh, just want to make sure I know where it's going. Benjamin, take it away. Yeah, sure. Um, so I know that Brittany responded to him. Um, she's going to email you, Dalton, let you know uh, the way that you can search for classes through your MyWSU. And then she's also offering to do a phone call with you. You can always go to the Wichita State website as well if you just want to take a look at like the curriculum for animation or game design or whatever one it might be. Um, and you can see the list of classes that you're going to be taking in the program there. Um, I'd also be happy to send that to you, or I'm sure Brittany would be able to send that to you as well. Okay, thank you. Um, what you see on the screen is a very, very small list of the entities that we work with uh, here in Wichita. As we already said, um, uh, we have uh, the Metropolitan Advantage, uh, and that's one of the things that makes us unique. Um, our engagement and collaboration, which are two of our main bywords in the college. It comes from every cultural quarter of Wichita. Um, the list of entities with whom we have worked with uh, would be in the hundreds if we tried to list everybody. This is just a representation of our sampling of the uh, entities that uh, our ongoing collaboration um, uh, is a permanent uh, part of our curriculum and uh, part of who we are and, and what we are. Um, so what you can become, uh, quite simply, you can become whatever you want to become and whatever you wish. As I said at the beginning, uh, we're a family and we're here to mentor you, to train you, to teach you, to advise you to support you in every way we can, because we know that every student has their own individual journey and that journey is up to you, but we are here to help you along the way to that journey. The jobs, professions, and careers that are in the arts are just simply too many to list and, and they number into the hundreds. Um, and they're growing exponentially uh, year by year. But I will say this to you, by choosing to major in the arts, you've chosen to dedicate your life to what I think of as the most noble endeavor ever devised by human beings, the intellectual, the emotional, and spiritual expressions that defines who we are as human beings, and that is the arts. Um, I don't know, does anybody have any, uh, anything that they would like to add to the overview presentation? Uh, I do uh, want to let you know that we have subsequent Facebook Live presentations 
that will uh, occur um, for the next four uh, weeks. Each one will feature a different school within the college. And they'll all be on a Thursday evening at 5 p.m., just like this one. And the schedule will be as follows, although we'll have it posted. Um, next week, May 7th, we will do a live chat that will feature the School of Digital Arts exclusively. Then the week after that, May 14th at 5 p.m., we will feature the School of Performing Arts and Linda Starkey. The week after that, again, 5 p.m. on a Thursday, May 21st, it will be the School of Art, Design, and Creative Industries. And taking up the rear, and last but never least, is uh, on May 28th at 5 p.m. is the School of Music and Alex Sternfield Dunn. So are there any other questions, any other comments that anyone would like to make before we sign off and wish you all a very wonderful Thursday evening? I just want to say that what makes the college unique and what truly is our raison d'etre is our students. Um, the the look in our faculty's eyes when they talk about an alum who they have mentored, taught, trained, and now they are out in the workforce and they're doing this performance or their, sh their artwork is in this show. Uh, that's what truly um, completes us and makes us who we are. And I want you to know that we are truly excited about this incoming freshman class. I want to honor all of you for your perseverance and following through in completing your uh, degree that you're going through now um, in this unprecedented time in our history. And I can't wait to meet all of you in person and to shake your hand and then clean, uh, wash my hands, <laughs> shake your hand and welcome you to the college. And with that, I will simply say, uh, I wish you all a safe and prosperous summer. And we look forward to you being here next fall. Take care and God bless.